Thank you, Andrew. Good morning and welcome to the part of the show just for us here in the West. Coming up, the flooding in Somerset has made national news all week, but the government message has been far from clear. First, the military were coming, then they weren't. Then David Cameron appeared to overrule his own minister, who was mobbed on a visit. We'll examine how the coalition is coping in a crisis with a professional spin doctor. We're joining her this week, uh, this week to chew the political fat of two aspiring parliamentarians. Labour's Thangham Debonair is hoping to unseat a Lib Dem minister in Bristol West. That's in 2015. Liberal Democrat Brian Matthew wants to take North Wiltshire from the Conservatives. Welcome to you both. Let's start by talking about Labour's plans to put up the top rate of tax to 50 pence. Would the Lib Dems support that? Well, I, I'm going to take a sort of Lord Oakshot approach to it actually and, and say that I think what's really important is that the economy works and for that we've got to say Europe is the big issue not really the top rate of tax and it's so absolutely essential that uh, that we, we stay in Europe. Um, right okay yeah. well slightly off piste but what about uh, why has Labour gone off on this one why is it so important when for 13 years they they didn't have a top rate of tax of 50 pence. Well, in fact, of course, towards the end of the last Labour government, we did introduce the for 50 one rate of tax, and I'm fully supporting reintroducing it uh, when we win next year in 2015, because this is about fairness. It's about reducing inequality and promoting equality, and it's also those with the broader shoulders take the greatest share of the burden. Or was it just about a slogan, really? No, I don't think it's just about a slogan. I mean, it's actually about money. It's about how do we pay for our schools, how do we pay for our hospitals, and those people who are earning the most, they're not going to be taxed 50% on every penny, it's just going to be that which they earn over 150,000. So if you're a millionaire, you're only going to be paying 50% tax on 850,000. I think they can cope. Whereas our schools, our hospitals, our roads, our public transport, those things all need public money. And we've got to get the money from somewhere. Well, has she got a point? I don't really have a problem with that. Um, Good. The, the, top rate, the top rate of tax um, issue... There is some, some worry by the Conservatives that, that it would lead to um, a sort of lack of confidence in the economy. But as I say, the, the, real, the real fear must be, in terms of overseas investors, what happens with Europe. Okay. And that's where the, the Conservatives are rather letting us all down. OK, thank you. The local Thank him. Were you impressed by David Cameron when he sort of seized control of the situation this week? I think... That showed just how out of touch with people he is. I mean, you could see actually from, from that clip just there that people are actually in Somerset have taken control of the situation themselves and actually look very fed up that it was too little too late. They've been underwater for weeks and weeks. It's been affecting their lives. It's been affecting children's ability to get to school. But actually the people of Somerset have taken control. I think it's pretty much adding insult to injury to turn up a bit late and to turn up with all sorts of different ideas and within the space of the last seven days contradict them, change their minds and not look decisive at all. That wouldn't have inspired confidence in me. It's if a great I was on lesson the to political students, though, the power of number 10. Yes. It was very interesting that a minister went down a couple of weeks ago and no one, took a no one knew no. who he was. The Environment Secretary went down and said oh we'll come up with a plan in yeah. six weeks time yeah. there were some bad headlines in the yeah. Daily Mail this week and, and the Prime, Prime Minister got hold of it and by golly things happened things happen but the thing is it's the something must be done approach which worries me and I think it probably worries the people of Somerset as well which is just being seen to do something that being uh, being thoughtful about what it is that needed doing and actually this was a preventable disaster the rain isn't preventable but we're having contingency plans that is something you should do and if you cut the environment agency which is what David Cameron did very quickly after he took power in 2010 with Nick Clegg's help. If you cut the Environment Agency, it will have consequences. There was no, the there's line. no dredging under Labour years, of course. But that, that's if you cut the Environment Agency, there are consequences, and we've seen them this week. The Environment okay. Agency doing their best. Nice of you to come in. It may be a British institution, but the number of pubs closing down is rising at an alarming rate. Politicians blame the giant pub companies, which own a third of our boozers. MPs say landlords are being forced to buy beer at inflated prices. Well, Thangham, has she convinced you that regulation is unnecessary? No, absolutely not. I think you asked the right question straight away at the start. How is a pub landlord supposed to live on £10,000 a year, working 70, 80 hours a week? 
I thought that landlord put it really well and that's why Labour Party has been really pleased to try and push the government to introduce legislation sooner rather than later. So what later. would the regulation actually entail? Well it would, it would do various things but one of the things it would do would be, be to provide a place for disputes and uh, to be settled um, that would allow um, small landlords such as the landlord in, in that clip to be able to take on the pubco fairly and with an independent arbiter and I think that would have really helped his situation instead of having to retire through ill health but it would also um, allow them to be able to have much more scope for negotiation. I think locking landlords in like that is really unfair and that's why we're on the side of landlords who are trying to cope and trying to keep a, a business alive in a difficult time. It is difficult times. Right. Yeah. A lot of people say it was Labour's ban on smoking in pubs which actually caused much of the decline. Banning smoking in public places has improved the health of so, so many thousands, possibly millions of people in this country. I am never, ever going to regret the ban on smoking. I think it's helped smokers to give up. It's helped children and other adults not to but be damaged by passive smoking. As a I think that closing pubs is not directly attributable to the ban on smoking. Right. However, the Labour's trying to support pubs. And I think it's astonishing that the Lib Dems and the Tories voted against this. Charlotte okay. Leslie, we... who stands up for them, didn't even support this legislation. We need to move on. Uh, let's talk about taking children out of school and finding parents who do. What, hang on, what do you think? Children should be in school and heads have very little discretion at the moment. It's actually a very complicated piece of work. I'm a school governor. I back our head every time she tries to keep children in school. So if a parent comes to you and says, look, I can, get, I can take I can my understand. child to the sun and save £1,000, you say no. They could save even more money if they keep the children in school and don't take the holiday at all. But I understand why parents want to do this. I think it's right that schools are calling on holiday companies to offer fairer deals. But ultimately, your child's education, there is nothing to replace that. Yeah. OK. Thank you both very much indeed. And that's it from uh, Soggy West this week. Thank you to Thangham Debonair and Brian Matthew for taking part.